Meanwhile, the annual global risks report by the World Economic Forum identify the headline risks, challenges and the opportunities the world is facing as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic with the aim of raising awareness, fostering widespread debate and enabling better decision making. To this end, the World Economic Forum on Tuesday held a COVID-19 risk outlook. What we tried to do is understand the views of 350 plus chief risk officers from across various sectors, various geographies, to understand what are they thinking the risks emerging from COVID-19 are likely to be in the next 18 months across um, economic issues, social issues, technological issues, environmental issues, and then to look a little bit into what the interconnections of those risks are. Uh, I want to go to, um, to Nigeria, if we can, and to uh, Plus TV Africa, to Favor Omakai uh, for your question. Okay, so um, with countless reiteration of the vast impacts of the pandemic on you all, and ranging from global recession, global recession and high unemployment, seeing that the world's third biggest economy, Japan, is now experiencing a recession. What can be done to handle the already predicted and perceived risk? Thanks for that. So the um, the recession risks that well, the recession that we're already seeing in place in in uh, some of the world's biggest economies. Uh, how do we you know grapple with those emergent risks? That's a huge huge question. But I know it goes into some of the work that you do, Sadia, on skills and on inclusivity and making sure that people have jobs to go to as we, as we go forward. Um, how are you looking at the challenges that this uh, economic crisis as well as healthcare crisis brings? Yeah. I think, um, first of all, we can't position it as a trade-off between those two aspects. We have to try to deal with both the health and the economic um, crisis together. Um, and manage the fallout that it has um, in relation to unemployment, in relation to wages. Um, there's a number of, of aspects that we've been looking at. For some time, we've already been pointing to the acceleration when it, um, of the fourth industrial revolution and what that means in terms of investing in better skills. That is reskilling, upskilling, and redeployment of the adult workforce, but it's also a pretty fundamental investment that's required in education systems. Um, this is something we launched at um, Davos also in, in January 2020, um, and we called it the reskilling revolution, providing better education skills and jobs for 1 billion people by 2030. That's something that we're going to be doubling down on. We need that reskilling and upskilling investment. But there's a second aspect that we need, which is mapping out much better what those jobs of tomorrow are. And I think this crisis has, in essence, revealed even more what those jobs of tomorrow are. They are healthcare jobs, they are care jobs, they're education jobs. All of the professions that have previously not been valued enough are now being seen as essential work. And so there's also a possibility of improving the wages and conditions in those sectors. Um, we also know that green economy jobs are going to be in much higher demand than before. And finally, technology-related roles are going to be in much higher demand than before. 